It is time for Hipster History. One of the things I really enjoy in the show, and which uh, I know a lot of people enjoy as well from the feedback I've gotten, is finding figures from history and events and places that people have now forgotten about and bringing them out of the dustbin and sharing them with you guys So and learning a little bit every day. So, one of the things that the alt-right makes an argument about is the issue of immigration. And the argument is, okay, and the, this is the anti-alt-right argument. The alt-right argument is like, okay, we're getting overrun by Mexicans and, and people from like non-whites, and it's going to ruin America. And the argument against this was, well, they said the same thing 100 years ago about the Italians and the Irish and the Eastern Europeans, and it was fine then, so it's going to be fine now. You're just differently for because it's racist. And that's not, in my opinion, a good counter-argument because they could have been wrong then and wrong now, or wrong then and right now, or right then and right now, or right then and wrong now. You know, it, either of those possibilities is logically possible. So that's about immigration. Something different, though, is what we think of when we think of terrorism. Because terrorism, uh, especially political terrorism, in contemporary America, and not that long ago, I would say generally, is regarded as having a long beard uh, and a certain kind of head wrap. However, let's take a look at this picture. This is Louis Ling. And this hunk was one of the, other than the Klan, was one of the first American political terrorists. Can we blow him up? No pun intended. So in 1886, Ling was not present. Doesn't he look like he should be in Williamsburg today? This is from 1886. He was not present at Chicago's Haymarket Square for what became known as the Haymarket Riot. May 4th, 1886. Uh, What's that? Uh, 133 years ago. A bomb was thrown into the crowd of cops by an unidentified person. And the prosecutors presented evidence that it was Ling who was involved with making the bomb. Seven men were arrested the next day in connection with the bombing, which killed one officer and several other policemen. He was discovered in his hiding place on May 14th, 1887, pulled a revolver, fought with two cops before being arrested. Ling and eight other anarchists, they were anarchists in the sense of, we want to use revolutionary violence to affect political change, were, arrest, were charged on June 21st, 1886, with criminal conspiracy, and were convicted and sentenced to death. Again, they were not charged with murder. They were charged with conspiracy. Supposedly, and this is one of the most badass quotes in history, when Ling was arrested, he said, I couldn't have thrown that bomb. I was at home making bombs. In his, in his statement, after he was sentenced to death, you can, it, this sounds like something out of a movie. Ling said, the judge himself was forced to admit that the state's attorney had not been able to connect me with the bomb throwing. The latter knows how to get around it, however. He charged me with being a conspirator. How does he prove it? Simply by declaring the International Working People's Association to be a conspiracy. I was a member of that body, so he has the charge securely fastened to me. Excellent. Nothing's too difficult for that genius of a state's attorney. This is a man who's just been sentenced to death. He goes, I protest against the conviction, against the decision of the court. I do not recognize your law, jumbled together as it is by the nobodies of bygone centuries. And I do not recognize the decision of the court. I tell you frankly and openly, I am for force. I repeat, I am the enemy of the order of today, and I repeat that with all my powers, as long as breath remains in me, I shall combat it. I declare again, frankly and openly, that I'm in favor of using force. I stand by what I said to the captain. If, you use, if they use cannons against us, we shall use dynamite against them. Perhaps you think you'll throw no more bombs, but let me assure you, I die happy on the gallows. So confident am I that the hundreds and thousands to whom I've spoken will remember my words, and when you shall have hanged us, they will do the bomb throwing. In this do I say to you, I despise you. I despise your order, your laws, your force-propped authority. Hang me for it. On November 6th, 1887, four bombs were found in his cell. 
Four days later, he committed suicide the day before he was scheduled to hang because he had a blasting cap smuggled in by a fellow prisoner, put in his mouth, lit it at 9 a.m. It blew off his hunky lower jaw, damaged a large portion of his face. He survived for another six hours, writing on the cell walls in his own blood, hooray for anarchy in his native German. Until his death at around 3 p.m., he was 23 years old. Ling is buried uh, in a plot marked since 1893 by the Haymarket Martyrs Monument. There's a monument to these men in Chicago, Forest Park, Illinois, more specifically. Uh, on June 26th, Illinois' governor um, in 1893 pardoned all of them, saying they were innocent of the crime they had died for. There was nothing to connect them with this bomb throwing. And on the monument, there is a quote, which is, uh, there's a few different ways. August Spies, who was one of the men who was hanged, he goes, the day will come when our silence will be more powerful than the voices you are strangling today. That prediction came true because Louis Ling inspired Emma Goldman and through her work and some others in 1901, it resulted in the death by assassination of a president. But that is a story for another day.